Hello and welcome to Reinfuse. Today we are going to open up our CPC uh, Plus 464. 464 Plus. Anyway, yeah, our Amstrad uh, 464 Plus. Um, now we have one. I was really after a 6128 Plus because obviously it's got a disk drive in, it's got 120k memory. Could never get one for a decent price, but I did manage to get the 464 Plus for a decent price, and you can upgrade them basically to the 6128. So you can't magically make the case the same. But you can get a disk drive if you want to, and but more importantly, you upgrade the memory, which is really the more important thing for now. So uh, yeah, we're going to do that upgrade right now. Okay, so here we are then with a uh, rather yellowed <laughs> 464 Plus. Um, apologies, by the way, if you can hear the fan. It's so hot I can't possibly do this without the fan on so uh, yeah it, that may be messing up some of the uh, background noise apologies but yeah it's so hot in this room it's, it's unbelievable so I guess what we're going to do is we're going to open this up and, and do the mod now we're only going to see all these there's lots of stuff here but um, we're only going to be using a portion of this so this these components they're all basically the whole thing so this is also the drive we want you to activate drives on this as well. We're not going to do that. Not in this one anyway. We're going to do the memory. The memory is the most important thing. So we want to take this from uh, 64K to 128. That's the most important thing. So we'll do that one first. And maybe in a later one, we'll do the drive update. Um, I've got the C4 CPC cartridge. So yeah, having disk support isn't a huge... Um, thing for me we'll do it eventually i i don't know how we're going to do it because you do of course need to get a drive in there i don't really want to remove the tape deck you know because it's nice <laughs> and i don't really want to cut a hole in the back of here for an external one either um maybe i don't know how yellow that is you see the difference <laughs> that's that's a fairly big difference so anyway let's open this up and then we'll install the components needed for memory, it's not that many, so it's not so bad. Anyway, let's get her open. There we are. That's the bare board. We'll be zooming in a bit there. So, if you look at this little map that was uh, printed in one of the magazines of the time. So we're looking for C12 and C13. So there they are, those two there. So that's where our memories go installed, be installed. We also need to install capacitors in C12 and C13. And a resistor R55, ah, which goes here, it's just missing there. So that's not so bad. There's, um, there's only a few components. This shows a few more components, but they're not actually needed. So let's have a look at what we actually need. I got this from the CPC wiki, by the way. And this shows us all the components. These are all the components needed for the full modification, including disk drive, which obviously, again, we're not going to do. So we need C12, C13, so IC12, IC13, well we know those, those are memory chips, and they should be here. Four one four six four. yep, okay. Um, oh yeah, 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 see, oh no, what's the R? R55, which is a 33 ohm, one quarter, one eighth, sorry. And... 33 ohm one eighth and oh, there's page two hold on there we go and c12 and c13 are 100 nanofarad ceramic capacitors which we have our little box of ceramic capacitors right here and these should be 104s I uh, we have 104s. Maybe out of 104s. I know I've got some though, so don't panic. Great! There we go. We do indeed have more. We're going to fill up our little box, please. 
a slightly different colour, but that's no problem. There we are. And I think that's all we need. Yeah, that's it. That's all the components. So, should be simple, although we do have to remove the solder from all of these bits, because this was wave soldered, so uh, it literally just coated the whole thing. So let's try, we have to try a couple of different methods here. Well, that was a pain. Um, yeah, it didn't come out quite as easy as I was hoping it was going to. Very, very old solder, solder in there. Uh, in the end, I had to do the old uh, holding the solder on one side and using the solder sucker on the other side, which I don't like doing because it's very easy to slip and scratch the motherboard. Obviously, not something you really want to do. So, um, what was that? I had a lot of mess on this table as well. All right, we'll give the board a bit of a scrub just to make sure we've got no uh, outstanding um, solder particles that might bridge. All right, that's probably all right. So let's see if we've got some chip holders that fit those holes. Hopefully we do. Not those ones. Are they one too big? That's so annoying. Well, we might have to cut one of those up then. If we've got two of them. Okay, so do I would I rather cut one of these up or use one of the cheap ones? I think I'd rather cut one of these up. So we've got to cut one pin off of these. Not great, it's always best to have the right size, but because you're gonna weaken them if you do this. You could do it like that and just cut the pins off and, and make sure you leave the, uh, the bit with the cutout so you can get that right. Oh, is that going to... Yeah, I think I can still get the capacitor in there. That's fine. Can we do the same with this one? So, not ideal, but not terrible either. <sighs> so, let's solder those in. And of course, the downside of having these rolled ones are they don't, the legs don't bend out properly, so you will have to hold them in as you solder, but that's fine. You just need to... <clears throat> and then all we have to do is get one of the pins to hold it in place.
There we go. Lucky I put that over with my uh, <laughs> the rest of the memory, otherwise I'd have forgotten about it. And then wonder why it wasn't working. So yeah, there you go. It was just doing that. It's slightly brighter than the others. Obviously the colour bands are basically the same though. <sighs> Alright, now hopefully these chips work. I've got four of them, so... No, I've got two of them. Okay, <laughs> so if they work, they work. Oh, these have definitely been reused as well. Which is good and bad. Good, they probably means they're not fake. Bad that, yeah. How tested were they? Right, there we go. Those chips are in. Making sure the semicircles are all facing the right way. Right, now we're zoomed in. <laughs> You'll probably be able to see there's quite a few solder points that don't have components. This one being one of the prime candidates here. Uh, yeah, and these are basically all of the bits that we have to put in place. So um, yeah, there's a couple of chips there, there, yeah, that there. Um, and these, yeah, these are all the bits that will make up the actual Four, six, the 646 part of this. There's also this here, which would be the external uh, socket, but we do need to modify the case and find a place to put this uh, thing here. But I won't be doing that because I don't really want to cut into the case just yet. Um, we'll find a way of doing this at some point. Right. Well, I mean, the first order of business is to get rid of this solder, which I will try to do using just uh, solder wick to begin with, um, but I suspect we may end up having to bring out something uh, else like the uh, desoldering station or the, the solder sucker. But anyway, let's find out. Right, so all of the solder is out. Uh, quick eyed among you may notice <laughs> there's a header in place over here. Uh, that's because one of the uh, one of the pads started to come off, so uh, I had to. Well, the easiest way of saving it was to put this on. Um, hopefully, that's good enough. Now, I think what I'll do is because we've done a lot of work on this now, <laughs> uh, put a lot of heat for it as well. So I think what I'll do is I will clean it up with a bit of isopropyl and then we'll quickly go and test it. So we'll have to put these back in place, I imagine. Um, now there's a chance that it won't work with, now we've done all this anyway, because it may be we've broken a link somewhere because the solder was linking something. I don't know, but we'll give it a shot just to see what happens. Um, do we, or do we just put the stuff in? Because if it doesn't work, it doesn't matter regardless. Mm. You know what? I think we will. We'll put the stuff in place. That way we won't have to clean it twice as well anyway. Um, right. So we have our list of uh, changes. It came from the CPC wiki. I'll put the link in the description below. Uh, ex excellent resource for uh, Amstrad stuff, by the way. So let's just start putting components in. Um, again, there's probably no points. <laughs> Uh, you're watching me sold these in, so uh, I will just put them in and we'll probably jump cut to the end or something. Who knows? Right, so first of all then we're going to be putting... We'll do it by the, the, the actual list order here. And uh, that means we're putting in the data separator chip first. I've got this huge bag, by the way, of components. 
So this is all the components for this. There's a lot of them. Um, so yeah, well that's a chip. So we need a chip holder for that. So what have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 eight. So that's a 24 pin chip holder, which I'm sure I've got. Yep, there we go. Right, so I will do these and we're back in a second. Right, one component that you might have a problem getting is this uh, NR01, which is a resistor network. Now, I couldn't find one of the right amount, which is a 680 times six, but you can just make them using just a bunch of resistors. These ones possibly a bit big, but I guess we'll find out in a second. Yeah, those are a little large, but <laughs> they're all we've got at the moment, so we'll have to make do. Okay, very possibly one of the worst bodies I've ever done. It's fine, I will at some point replace that, but it'll be okay for testing it. Uh, right, let's get on with the rest of the uh, soldering. All right, so uh, I actually did forget to put these wires back in place, so I've now done that. It's quite tricky to get them in with the actual components, but they're in there now. Um, right, so really all I've got to do is clean up the board a little bit, um, put the chips in place, and then we go and give it a test. Okay, it is back together. Uh, so. <laughs> Guess we need to test this out. Right, well, the first thing we've got to do is put in the cartridge because these don't turn on without the cartridge. This has got burning rubber and also the basic language on it. <sighs> All right, let's turn it on. Well, that's a good sign. <laughs> let's push F1. Okay, well, it's running. That's obviously <laughs> a good sign. Now, before, if you remember, we hit control and enter and it started immediately low from tape. Now what should happen now is it should bring up an error because there's no disk drive because it will try to boot from the disk drive first. Exactly like that. And then if we do pipe and tape and then try to do it, it should now try to load from tape. Yay! <laughs> okay, so we still need to work out what we're going to like plug into this and how we're going to do it are we going to cut the case open to put in the either an external socket or run a gotek through there are we just going to try to run a gotek somewhere else who knows need to work that one out but if you remember last time we had uh, put all the chips and the resistors and capacitors and what have you into the machine to make the uh, floppy drive part of this stuff work we had uh, put all the chips in and we had put in the connector for the actual floppy interface. Now, 
The one thing we hadn't put in, which we needed, uh, if we take this out, is there are three pads here which need to be cleared. And once they're cleared, oh, that's going to slide off. Never mind. Go over there for now. Uh, once they're cleared out, the two leftmost, as we're looking at it now, so over here. Uh, in fact, I'll zoom in on that. So as you can see here. This is, uh, we're just going to use the two leftmost pads and the, make sure I get this right, the, uh, one that's on the left, like on the far left or over way over here, that's uh, the plus five volts and the one on this side is ground. So for a uh, floppy disk, so for uh, a floppy drive or a, a GoTech as we've got here, the, uh, two again leftmost pins on here so the far left one being plus five volts the one next to it being ground we can connect those to the pin header and then if we plug that in we've got our voltages now the connector here is 26 pin the connector on here is very much not 26 pin it is uh 34 pin so we need to convert that. Now there are cables you can buy. So this cable goes from uh, 26 pin to 34 pin. You can see it splits the cable and then uses a certain number of pins. Uh, I have got a, this is actually a GPIO cable for a Raspberry Pi because it's 26 pins, which is handy. And that's going into the, uh, the Mel connector for that. There are also these little boards which are freely available online if you search for them or you can buy them ready, well, a PCB and they're easy enough to make up and they will go into there and they'll convert it to a normal floppy connector. Uh, I found that unwieldy to use so I changed what I was doing. Anyway, so now those are plugged in. So our GoTex should work. Uh, the RAM's plugged in so we should have 128k. Uh, so now we should actually test those things out. Right. So I was going to capture this using my capture device, but I think we'll just record it straight off the screen so you can kind of see I'm messing around with this as well. First of all, then let's turn this on. All right, so first of all, we need to go to basic. There we go. Right. So. This is currently set to Amersylvania Castle. If we do a cat, hopefully, there we go. <laughs> so we would load that, but that's, uh, actually, I will load that. It's, I think, a Spanish game. For a lot of things, you can just do control and enter, but I've not found one yet that works. So I don't know if that's this or if it's just how the images are laid out. But either way, it loads. Kind of hear the fake disk stuff. Uh, number and name, isn't it? Do I, is that, do I want to write my name? I don't think I do. Right. Well, I know what the top one means. So there we go. We go into that. Hey, there we go. <laughs> there we are. It is working. Right, let's try a different game. Right, well, let's see if the control enter works. It does not. Okay. I don't know. I don't know enough about um, the Amstrad to know what the files need to be to be that kind of auto run thing. So yeah, Rainbow Islands, particular favorite of mine. No, how do we start? Oh, that adds in credits apparently. And space, so there we go, Insect Island. That's some good music. That's pause. Oh, Rainbow Islands, what are your buttons? That's fire. Oh, no, that's not a... <laughs> These buttons do not feel like they're going to be good. <laughs> I 
That's, I mean, that makes sense as jump. Oh, okay, I think I've got the buttons. <laughs> Just in time to die again. There we go, we got it. Right, we're there. Oh. <laughs> anyway, you get the point. The disk drive is working. So let's try something 128K. And I think the best thing for that is there were some demos released and they are 128K only. So let's give those a try. Okay, so here we are. They are on the C4 CPC cartridge. So let's try the DMA music demo. These are all, as you can see from the, the title there, these are all, all 128K only games, uh, demos. We'll turn it up. Right, let's try another one. One of these may have copyrighted music on. <laughs> Apparently this is the best CPC only demo. You've got to be confident in yourself, that's the important thing. Well, it's, it's hard to argue with that logic. Anyway, <laughs> that's it. It is absolutely working. So uh, let's go to a summary. And there we go. The <laughs> update which we started quite a while ago is finally done. Our 464 Plus is now, for all intents and purposes, a 6128 Plus. Now we still have to work out what we're going to do about that disk drive. Uh, as you can see, the GoTech was open because I was kind of toying with maybe there was somewhere I could fit it inside there without outwardly damaging the actual case or anything. Um, as you can probably guess, it didn't work. Uh, one way I've seen other people do it is you, there's just enough gap in the case when it's put together, you can put the ribbon cable and power cable through the back. Uh, and it will just be compressed by the uh, actual casing. So I might try that. That's one of the reasons why I've got the longer uh, ribbon cable. So we could try that. I could just extend those power cables a little bit. Um, and of course, the other option is I just go with it and cut the back of the case and put the Centronics port on and have it external, which would be the neatest way of doing it. But I really do balk at making changes to a computer which you can't undo. Um, I mean, I guess technically you can undo it, but it wouldn't be the same. Uh, so I guess we've got to work that out. But we have those things there now. We've got the ability to use the drive. The 128K stuff works. So we've got all that extra memory. Um, so yeah, I guess that's this series kind of done. What we will do, because you'll probably notice we didn't play any 128K games. We just did some demos. So we will be doing uh, a little bit of a video about the 128K games for the, uh, for the Amstrad, because... Uh, Reason being, a lot of them were uh, Magnetic Scrolls Adventure Games, which is something we've already covered in another video. Um, but we'll have a little look at them on the Amstrad and a few of the other games as well. And uh, maybe some of those uh, ports that were ported to the GX4000, because of course they're kind of coming home again on the machine they were ported from, but they're on that cartridge, so we can take a look at those. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for watching. Uh, hit like if you like the video. Uh, hit subscribe if you really like the video. If you didn't like the video, you have something else to say, then please leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to be told when future videos come out. And uh, if you want to 
get early videos or exclusive videos, then join our Patreon or the YouTube membership uh, for as little as a pound. And uh, you'll get all that. See you next time. The present is horrible. The future looks bleak. Remember our childhood to get us through.